Hello my soccer universe for I'm shooting this late now in the evening on Sunday 17th for reviewing a very interesting week in Germany and mainly in for Bayern I have to say um, you saw the headline Bayern has the last laugh in a very strange week overall uh, it was really really interesting what was happening, um, you may know I'm not the biggest sympathizer with uh, Bayern, in fact I love to hate them, but <laughs> gotta give credit to them. They again managed to have the last laugh and are the big winners now uh, after everyone was pointing their fingers at them. And pointing their fingers happened because they were eliminated from the German Cup, the DFB Pokal. Uh, then in the Bundesliga, I mean, almost all direct rivals dropped points. Uh, or all the, the direct title rivals dropped points, so that was a, a big one. Uh, it was overall a very weird, weird run with lots of draws in there. We had a very emotional comeback of Luka Jovic, that also has, has to be said. And in Austria, the league returned with a single game. So we'll talk about that. But let's start with the German Cup. I actually want to avoid uh, avoid talking about this round, but then uh, probably the biggest result of the entire tournament happened. Last one, Wednesday late, Holstein Kiel against Bayern Munich. Bayern playing with a decent squad out there uh, and way up north uh, in Germany. And yeah, it was not the best weather either, but Gnabry uh, gave them the lead that Bartels could equalize in the 37th and Sunday right after I think it was a wonderful free kick gave them uh, the 2-1 and you think they played home nicely and also playing in those weird human race jerseys although I think I have had to say the Bayern one looked all looks almost the best but those specs where it's not fully colored that doesn't look quite all right but yeah Bayern seemingly uh, trying to uh, get this over the line the problem is in the 95th minute Kiel equalizes and then it goes all the way to penalties and what a penalty shooter it was Bayern going first with uh, Lewandowski, Kimmich, Müller, Alaba and Costa all converting but for uh, Kiel same thing Wahl, Arslan, Serra, Lee Jensung, Hauptmann also and then Roca steps up uh, penalty is saved and Bartels can slot it home give Kiel a big win and everyone in Germany ha 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 and everyone in that's still running in the uh, Pokal is very happy and you see here, here here the results I mean there were some remarkable ones before Christmas already we uh, you know Le 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 Leipzig teaching Augsburg I think Fürth over Hoffenheim already spent a little bit doom for Hoffenheim Paderborn winning at Union I think is the biggest upset here um, I really like the penalty shootout between Mainz and Bochum but Mainz had a 2 nil lead Bochum <laughs> converting all the penalties, mine's not a single one. And then another one, uh, this is a local tower between Stuttgart and Freiburg, also, uh, and then Le Le Leverkusen Frankfurt. So there were quite some interesting results, and I have to say, the German, the German Cup is probably one of the better cup competitions out there, if not the best. And yeah, with that, we have now the draw for the round of 16, or the third round. I have to say it's Stuttgart, Gladbach, and Wolfsburg, Schalke. Those are the standard ties. Everything else has pretty clear or well, you know horse and kill down after maybe but you know there's not much so let's go what happened in the Bundesliga uh, I didn't see anything of uh, only on against Leverkusen there were just way more interesting games of Friday evening uh, very late win uh, winner for only on and Leverkusen just cannot get uh, rolling again I mean they had the loss against Bayern and since then yes they won the uh, cup but that was that Teuchert getting the win there Dortmund should have uh, thought they had an early goal uh, in the seventh through Holland, but it was uh, offside in the build-up. Um, although it, was, it would have been a really, really nice, nicely goal, played goal or in the second minute. Dortmund having many chances and Marco Reus missing uh, at least one seater. And then in the second half, Mainz could creep it more even. And Mainz already had a 2 0 lead at Bayern, if you remember. Uh, and they take the lead through Ostonal in the 57th. Who? And then they actually that that lead looked low, looked actually all right for a while. Meunier equalizes, and then from the kickoff, uh, Meunier again gets uh, checked in the box. It is a penalty, and Marco Roy steps up, goalkeeper in another direction, but he shoots it wide, and they cannot find the uh, winner. First team dropping points. Kern Hertha nil nil 
don't need to talk much about the same thing for Hoffenheim against Bielefeld. Uh, Bremen gets two very late uh, goals, that's why I'm wearing Bremen. I didn't necessarily want to put Bayern down because they lost once. Uh, but Gebre Selassie, the 84th, and Agu in the 87th, uh, sent uh, Bremen on their way uh, to an important win. And then Wolfsburg Leipzig was probably the from the table the best game of the round and it didn't de disappoint. Mo Mukele gives Leipzig an early lead but uh, Wolfsburg gets back into the game. Weghorst, uh, typical goal in Steffen, very unlucky goal and it gets deflected from the chest of I think it was Willy Orban uh, who puts it in. Uh, you know, not much but just enough to go to, to the green and Wolfsburg actually deserved the lead at the half. But then Leipzig very quickly comes back um, we, uh, Willy Orban getting an equalizer and probably they were then even closer to winning it, but no, they don't. So another team dropping points. So there's Leverkusen losing, Dortmund and Leipzig uh, dropping points. And all they could hope that is that Bayern will not drop points. We also had the last one, although Klapper, I don't think will be really in there. That was a weird game. I mean, the turf was newly laid and you could see that people were sli sl sliding. It was really, uh, maybe the club a little bit better. There was a good chance by Embolo. Then uh, Stindl converts a penalty in the thir thir 35th. Stuttgart comes out much better and gets the equal through Gonzalez and really is moving forward. They get the momentum to uh, push for 2-1, it seemed possible, and then Stindl, it was just three minutes after goal, plays a razor sharp pass to Zakaria, who makes a sprint, <laughs> was the fastest sprint this uh, <laughs> this year in the Bundesliga, makes it 2-1 for Gladbach, and then Gladbach actually for a longer time seems like they can play this home. Only the last five to six minutes, in, including uh, the stalls, the stoppage. It was really late that Stuttgart then came out and uh, challenged, challenged again, and then at the last minute they get the penalty. Yes, he, uh, Ben Zibaini, uh, I think, takes um, a Stuttgart player down. I think you can give, give, give it, but it was not a clear cut penalty for me, although they looked at it on VAR, and then the monkey Tuka gets an equalizer for Stuttgart. Maybe a little bit lucky, but I was quite happy about that one. Then today I only saw a little bit of the, uh, some, uh, the second half. I mean Lewandowski by an lead. It was horrible conditions, a lot of snow playing. And I have to say those Freif Reifer, which was with the black and the gray and um, quartered and then even the pants added a little bit as well, was interesting. The equalizer for Peterson was a crazy goal because I mean he already headed it in and Neuer gets it from uh, behind the line. And then there is another shot, it's again safe behind the line but with the foot by Neuer who then puts it on the bar. So at first it looked like, what? This was a crazy save but no, it was a clear, clear goal. Um, and for, a mi for 10 minutes or so you thought that Freiburg maybe could do a favor to everyone in the league. But Thomas Müller after Lira Sané assist, uh, gets the 2-1 and in the end it was a deserved win for Bayern, who get the last laugh, because as we'll see soon they uh, move ahead. But we have to talk about Eintracht Frankfurt, where the captain was playing the last game, um, and then Luka Jovic came back um, uh, for in, in into the game as well, well in 60 seconds it was 1-1 one, one at that point. Very quickly Andre Silva gets into an 28th goal, uh, Matthew Hoppe scores another one. It is 1-1 one, one in the 29th, so within a minute two goals. And then Luka Jovic comes on and scores two goals, both assisted by Kostic and this was the kind of the partnership that they had uh, not too long, long ago. Jovic who was uh, really bad at Real Madrid, suddenly finds his four for form again and I think uh, this might actually catapult Frankfurt maybe in contention for European spots. We will see. Uh, if we look now at the standings, um, it's very even in Germany, Bayern pulling away. And now I said it already when they got um, the late late goal against Leverkusen, that's where they took the lead and now they're starting to pull away because so far Leipzig could keep surf, but now Le Leipzig also draw points. I'm not saying this is necessarily it, but it really looks strong in Bayern's favor. I mean, 84% chance of winning the league speaks volumes. Union Berlin getting 
keep stay keeping up there uh, and uh, distancing themselves a little bit from Wolfsburg and Leverkusen also draw top and back. So, I mean, it's really Bayern, Leipzig, then Leverkusen, Dortmund, Union, Wolfsburg and Frankfurt. I think those two are teams that could go in there. Maybe Gladbach as well. I think that's where I would go, go, go the cut for European spots. And towards the bottom, it really looks bad for Mainz and Schalke. But I'm also quite worried about Köln. Um, maybe Bielefeld. Bielefeld getting some points as well and I, I don't know what's on with Hoffenheim and Hertha I have to say Hertha is really that absolute chaos club at the moment they should be their um, attitude is we should play for the top uh, places and now it's only on that's up there so really not looking good for them uh, here the adjusted standings which we don't really need but uh, the last bar it's confirmed. I mean, Bayern is actually outperforming themselves at the moment a little bit, uh, given the projected and expected uh, points. Same thing goes for Leipzig. Dortmund is the first one negative. The big positives of the season are Union and Augsburg, uh, who are overperforming quite uh, a lot lately uh, for quite a few seasons or, or, or already. That, that's what I must say. I also want to point out the 3.0 goals per game for Bayern. That's pretty amazing <laughs> of the Mainz negative. Uh, definitely uh, below what would expect from them. Speaking of, of expect, let's take the expected points and sort the league by that. And it tells you also the story. I mean, uh, Bayern's range is between 67 and 83 points. It's not a very high range. And with 67, I'm pretty sure they will not win the championship. But on average, Leipzig is, is supposedly getting 67 points. So... It looks very much in Bayern's favor. Uh, the overlap is very, very little. Leipzig also looking very safe in the second spot, although Dortmund Leverkusen might have a say about it. But those four here are the ones that are projected to go in the Champions League at the moment. Uh, then I would say, as I said, Gladbach, Wolfsburg, Frankfurt, Union, those are the ones for the, Euro the European spots, and Stuttgart probably will not get right in there. Then Hertha, Hoffenheim, Bremen, safe with Augsburg. I would argue we could start the relegation talk, but it's really with Bielefeld and Köln. Mainz and Schalke seem to be already gone from there. We have a midweek round, and I'm not sure how when I will do the next review video. It might be that I pack the two rounds together. Uh, Gladbach Bremen, just looking at the sim uh, similar logo, seems like a good uh, match, but I think the big one is Leverkusen Dortmund. That will show us a lot about these two teams. We have a Bavarian derby between Augsburg and Bayern. Is it game that Bayern usually does not like. And I also like the East German uh, ma match between Leipzig and Union. And I want to see what Freiburg and uh, Frankfurt are doing. So, I mean, it's not an uninteresting round. That's for sure. And then on the weekend, we start with another Gladbach in another big one. Gladbach against Dortmund. Another huge duel. I think no one can really afford to lose here. And I think a draw is also too little. Uh, how many goals will Bayern score against Schalke? This is, of course, the return from the first round. Other than that, we have Freiburg-Stuttgart. That's a derby. So, and Leverkusen-Wolfsburg also. Kind of an interesting one. So, lots of interesting stuff there. Little bit from Austria. We had the makeup game from round seven between Wolfsburg and Sturm, the earliest game ever played in Austrian, uh, in the Austrian league, thanks to global warming and Corona. This might become something that's a little bit. Sturm was probably the favorite before the game, was lucky to get out a nil nil draw. Their goalie really saved them big time. Wolfsburg getting a penalty in the 20, in, in the 28th that, got, that, that was missed, and a uh, Sturm player was sent, sent off, maybe the penalty foul. Um, clear goal scoring chance, then later on, really evolved. Wolfsburg had two or three good chances, especially towards the end of the first half. They just could not convert. And yeah, uh, Sturm gets a nil-nil draw, which means that in the table, in they now draw level with Salzburg, so still behind based on goal difference. Salzburg still also favors to make the championship, but we have this weird playoff system where the top six then play uh, out the champion, but with halved points and round it down. So yeah, we have to see how that is going. But at the, uh, at the moment, I think the six teams that are up there, are probably all the six teams that go in, but Tirol and St. Burton maybe have something to say. I still won't count Austria Wien out, but they have a long way to climb. So uh, the, uh, the adjusted standings, we 
again, we don't need much. It's just it's the first time we have a straight table. But you see that Sturm and Rapid and Tyrol are really outperforming themselves. And then there are some negative performers, which one of which is uh, interestingly Sal Salzburg, but also Wolfsburg is not doing all that great there. And then we have the expected regular season final standings. So we see that the top six, this is Salzburg through Tyrol, those will make it uh, on. Tyrol would be a huge surprise, I have to say, and still between Tyrol and St. St. Burton, according to this one. And then expected final standings, you see split in two with the halves, it's still Salzburg's league to lose. Lusk, my team, uh, odds on to be second, but it's a little bit more murky between Sturm and Rapid and maybe pot potentially Volvo was also back in there as well. But I think Sturm, Rapid and Lask will go for the Champions League spot. As for relegation at Mira, but yeah, who cares? The Austrian League will properly kick off next week with already a big one, Rapid against Sturm. That's a huge uh, matchup. Um, Salzburg has to play at Altach uh, and Lask against Tirol. Um, that's also big matchups and I think Wolfsburg, Hartberg don't underestimate that one. So that was what's happening in the two German speaking countries that I'm looking at re regularly. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a line below if you want to add some, something of what happened uh, this past week in Austria and mostly in Germany. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!